For millions of Filipinos, living surrounded by the sea is a way of life. But for some island communities, the ocean is no longer just a source of food and livelihood. It is an advancing threat. Rising sea levels, land subsidence, earthquakes, and stronger storms are slowly erasing land flooding homes and forcing entire communities to adapt or abandon the places they have lived for generations. In this countdown, we explore the top 10 islands in the Philippines most vulnerable to sinking or severe inundation, ranked from the lowest risk to the highest. We will examine where these islands are located, why they are sinking, how often they flood, and what daily life looks like for the people still living there. Awareness and preparation are critical, because for these islands, climate change is not a future problem. It is happening right now. And if you believe these island communities deserve recognition for their strength and bravery, type brave in the comments to show your support. By the end of this video, you will discover which islands are already disappearing at high tide, which are battling constant flooding and which may soon become uninhabitable. Let us begin. Island number 10, Ube Island, Bohol. Ube Island sits off the northeastern coast of Bohol, part of a network of low-lying islands shaped by coral reefs and shallow seas. While it remains largely inhabited, the signs of vulnerability are becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. High tides now reach further inland than they did a decade ago, flooding coastal homes and farmlands during certain months of the year. Residents report that storms feel stronger and flooding lasts longer, particularly during the monsoon season. Saltwater intrusion has begun to affect crops and freshwater sources, making farming and daily household use more difficult. Although Ube has not experienced dramatic subsidence like some neighboring islands, its low elevation places it at risk as sea levels continue to rise. What makes Ube important is not how bad conditions are today, but what it represents. It shows how vulnerability begins quietly, almost unnoticed, until flooding becomes routine. Ube is still standing, but the warning signs are clear, earning it the 10th spot on our list. Island number nine, the reef islets of the Danajon Bank. Stretching between Bohol and Cebu, the Danajon Bank is one of the world's only double barrier reef systems. Scattered across it are tiny reef islets and sandbars many unnamed and barely rising above sea level. These fragile landforms are among the first to feel the impact of rising seas. At high tide, some of these islets disappear entirely beneath the water. Fishermen who once rested or stored equipment on these sandbars now find them unreliable or gone altogether. With no elevation, no seawalls, and no permanent infrastructure, these islets offer no resistance to the ocean. While few people live on them year-round, their loss matters. They serve as fishing bases, navigational markers, and natural wave barriers. Their disappearance signals what could happen to larger islands next. These reef islets act as the canaries in the coal mine of sea level rise, making them number nine on our countdown. Island number eight, Inanuran Island, Bohol. Inanuran Island is located in the municipality of Tubigon, Bohol, it began sinking noticeably after the October 15, 2013 magnitude 7.2 earthquake. The quake caused land subsidence across several islands in the area, permanently lowering ground levels by crucial centimeters. Today, Inanuran floods regularly during high tide. Wooden walkways sit just above the waterline and homes are frequently surrounded by seawater. Children walk to school through flooded paths while residents time chores around the tides. What was once dry land is now often underwater. Unlike sudden disasters, Inanuran's crisis unfolds slowly. Each year, flooding becomes more frequent, erosion worsens, and repairs become more difficult. With no higher ground to retreat to, residents face a painful choice, adapt endlessly, or eventually leave. Inanuran's constant exposure places it firmly at number eight. Number seven, Pangapasan Island in Bohol. Pangapasan Island is another island forever changed by the 2013 Bohol earthquake. Once stable enough for daily movement without concern, the island now experiences frequent flooding, even during ordinary high tides. 
Waves from passing boats worsen erosion, slowly eating away at what little elevation remains. Homes on Pangapasan have been raised on stilts, and residents navigate between houses by wooden planks or small boats. The sea has become a permanent presence rather than an occasional visitor. Flooding disrupts fishing schedules, damages household items, and creates sanitation challenges. What makes Pangapasan particularly vulnerable is how little margin for error remains. Even small increases in sea level or stronger storms could overwhelm the island completely. Life continues through adaptation and resilience, but the ground beneath their feet grows less reliable every year, earning Pangapasan the seventh spot. Island number six, Batasan Island, Bohol. Batasan Island has become one of the clearest examples of how slow, invisible forces can permanently change a community. Located in Tubigan, Bohol, the island's problems accelerated after the 2013 magnitude 7.2 earthquake, which caused subtle but devastating land subsidence. The ground dropped just enough that seawater began reaching places it never had before, and it never stopped. Flooding is no longer tied only to storms. Even ordinary high tides push seawater into homes, pathways, and communal areas. Roads that once connected neighborhoods are now underwater, forcing residents to rely on boats or narrow wooden walkways. Daily life revolves around tide charts, not clocks. Families constantly raise floors, rebuild walls, and replace damaged belongings, only to watch the water return weeks later. Schools are disrupted, fishing schedules are shortened, and healthcare access becomes harder during flooding. Some residents have already left, while others stay because they have nowhere else to go. Batasan Island sits at a critical threshold, still inhabited, still fighting, but steadily losing ground. Its ongoing struggle places it at number six. Island number five, Bailang Bilangan Island, Bohol. Bailang Bilangan Island represents what happens when adaptation begins to fail. Once protected by natural sandbars and shallow reefs, the island has lost much of its natural defense. After the 2013 earthquake lowered the land, tides began reaching deeper inland, eroding shorelines that had existed for generations. Today, entire sections of the island are regularly submerged. During high tide, seawater flows beneath houses and lingers long after the tide recedes. Some homes now stand abandoned, their wooden floors permanently soaked and unusable. Residents who remain have elevated their houses multiple times, but each attempt buys less time than the last. Fishing, the island's primary livelihood, has become increasingly difficult. Docking areas disappear during high tide, equipment is damaged by salt water, and unpredictable conditions shorten time at sea. Freshwater sources are threatened by salt intrusion, forcing residents to rely on delivered water. Bilang Bilangan is no longer just adapting, it is retreating. The loss of land, homes, and stability places it firmly at number five on our list. Island number four, Montatau Island, Bohol. Mantatao Island is home to a dense population living on land that floods almost daily. Like its neighbors, Mantatao was affected by the 2013 earthquake, which permanently lowered the island's elevation. Combined with rising sea levels, this has turned high tides into routine flooding events. Homes are surrounded by water during peak tides, and narrow wooden walkways connect houses like fragile lifelines. During storms and typhoons, flooding becomes severe sometimes forcing families to evacuate temporarily. Freshwater wells are contaminated by salt water, fishing gear is damaged, and basic sanitation becomes a challenge. Despite these conditions, the community remains tightly knit. Mangroves provide some protection, but they cannot fully counter rising tides and subsidence. There is little higher ground to retreat to, and relocation options are limited. Mantatao's vulnerability lies not only in flooding, but in population density. With so many people relying on such limited land, even small increases in sea level have major consequences. That combination places Mantatao at number four. Island number three, low-lying islands near Panglao, Bohol. Near the popular tourist hub of Panglao are several low-lying islands facing an escalating crisis. While tourism has brought economic opportunities, it has also intensified environmental stress. Increased groundwater extraction has contributed to land subsidence, and coastal development has reduced natural buffers like mangroves. These islands now experience frequent tidal flooding, even during calm weather. Saltwater intrusion threatens freshwater wells, 
and erosion steadily eats away at coastlines. Roads flood, homes require constant repairs, and daily routines are shaped by the tides. What makes these islands particularly vulnerable is the intersection of human pressure and environmental change. As development expands, the land sinks faster and flooding worsens. Unlike remote islands, these communities face rising costs of living and increasing infrastructure strain. Though less visible than other sinking islands, their exposure and economic importance elevate the risk. Their combination of subsidence, sea level rise, and population growth earns them the third spot. Island number two, Sandbar Islands of Western Visayas and Palawan. Across Western Visayas and parts of Palawan, small sandbar islands sit just inches above the sea. Many rise less than one meter above sea level, making them extremely sensitive to even minor changes in tides or weather patterns. During storms, these islands are completely overtopped by seawater. Homes flood rapidly, vegetation is washed away, and residents are often forced to evacuate with little warning. With no seawalls, no, no elevation, and minimal infrastructure, these islands have almost no defense against rising seas. Each year, rebuilding becomes harder, materials are expensive, erosion worsens, and land area shrinks. Some islands that once supported small communities are now used only seasonally or have disappeared altogether. These sandbar islands are among the most likely to vanish entirely within decades. Their extreme fragility and lack of protection place them at number two. At the top of our list is Pugad Island, a tiny seven hectare island in Manila Bay. It is the most vulnerable island to sinking in the Philippines. Unlike many islands affected primarily by sea level rise, Pugat is actively sinking due to rapid land subsidence of up to 11 centimeters per year. This subsidence is driven largely by excessive groundwater extraction in surrounding areas. The result is relentless flooding. High tides inundate the island multiple times a week. Streets have turned into canals. Homes are flooded so frequently that residents keep buckets and pumps ready at all times. Children wade through water to attend school. Families schedule daily activities around tide charts. Freshwater sources are threatened and constant exposure to salt water damages homes beyond repair. With such limited land, there is nowhere to retreat. Puget Island is not facing a future disaster. It is living one. Its extreme subsidence, dense population, and chronic flooding make it the most vulnerable island on this list. From the fragile sandbars of the Visayas to the sinking streets of Puget Island, these communities are living on the front lines of climate change. Rising seas and sinking land are not distant threats. They are reshaping lives right now. Monitoring adaptation and decisive action will determine whether these islands can survive or disappear beneath the waves. If this video changed how you see climate risks in the Philippines, do not stop here. Watch our next video. How these 10 big cities in the Philippines are at huge risk of sinking by 2030 and discover what the future may hold for urban communities facing rising seas.